Let's say you finally meet someone really special and your heart opens up, your guard comes down, and you feel connected to the person you're dating. And then a red flag appears. But because you're feeling connected and good about this relationship, you may not want to let go. Perhaps you keep dating to see if things will change. Often there's a nagging voice in the back of your mind reminding you that you have some serious concern, aka the red flags about this person. Because you're a good person, you give the other person the benefit of the doubt. You sort of wait it out and hope and pray that they aren't what you think they are. What you have to remember is that in the beginning of a relationship, this is the perfect time to really get to know the other person. So before getting swept off your feet, make sure that you know what you're getting into. Translation, don't ignore the red flags. So the dictionary defines the red flag as a warning signal akin to a red traffic light. A red flag when you're getting to know someone new should make you stop and pay attention because those red flags that you ignore in the beginning are ultimately what cause the relationship to end down the road. So save yourself some future heartbreak by not ignoring these warning signs. Okay, here's what you should keep in mind. That not everyone you date is going to end up as your life partner. Never go into a date with your mind already made up. You should have no expectations and remain detached. You don't have any idea who the other person is yet. And that takes time. I like to think of dating as trying on new shoes. If they don't fit or are uncomfortable, you shouldn't buy them. So when working with my clients, it is at this point that I remind them that breaking off a relationship is much easier than breaking off an engagement. I know this is easier said than done, but it's a necessary reality check. So the longer a relationship lasts, the harder it is to pull away. I'm sure many of you know this by now. So try to make a decision in good time. And once you've made the decision, don't delay on that decision. Now, something else I want to address here um, regarding red flags and particularly why we ignore them. So in toxic relationships, we may ask ourselves, why didn't I see the unhealthy relationship clues sooner? Well, here's the answer. The answer is often that we did see the flags, but we choose to ignore them at the time. And three main or common, very common reasons why we ignore them. For one, we have this hope that the problem will disappear on its own and our fantasy will continue uninterrupted. Number two, it's because we have been taught that relationships are hard and that we must compromise. These include cultural pressures to stay in the relationship no matter what, or they may include the relationships within the environment we grew up in that we've seen as difficult, but yet the parties involved remain together, struggle through it, whether frustrated or not, unhappy or not, and you know, are still together perhaps even today. A third reason why we ignore the red flags is because of the inconvenience of seeing them. We may have to make big changes such as find a new place to live, decisions with our finances, or we'll have to learn to or accept being alone. So there are three main and common reasons why we choose to ignore red flags. But yet, I want to speak more on giving persons the benefit of the doubt or when we kind of try to change the color of this red flag to orange or yellow. I was thinking about it and found out that the Urban Dictionary defines it this way. When giving someone the benefit of the doubt, you're believing what they say and taking their word because you yourself have some doubt about what happened. The Free Dictionary says about it, to believe something good about someone rather than something bad when you have the possibility of doing either. That one is interesting. The concept of giving or not giving the benefit of the doubt 
to someone is very important when it comes to relationships. So the big question is, when is it wise to give the benefit of the doubt? And when is it not? The rule of thumb is to initially give a person the benefit of the doubt, but if the same thing keeps happening a number of times or over and over, like consistently being late or overly critical, then trust your instincts and your intuition about the person and disengage from him or her before becoming more involved. You know, you have to learn to trust the early signs of someone being resistant and fearful of intimacy or someone using lateness, a judgmental attitude or emotional distance to just push you away. You also have to learn to trust yourself. That's so vitally important. Remember, it can be very easy for a bright and charming person to say the things that you want to hear. But is their behavior consistent with their words? If you feel confused, pay attention. Often confusion is a great indicator that the other person is not being honest. If you begin to feel anxious about the relationship, pay attention to that anxiety. It could be telling you that this person is not ready to be honest, trustworthy, caring, or reliable. If you are sincerely looking for a loving relationship, then don't go overboard on giving the benefit of the doubt. If you keep on giving the benefit of the doubt, even though you get hurt again and again, then you need to be honest with yourself about what you really want in a relationship. Are you convincing yourself that you can change the person? This false belief can cause a lot of hurt. Of course, people can change, but we can't change them. When a person is fearful of intimacy, has a fear of engulfment, and shies away from commitment, or when they commit, but then push you away in various different ways, the chances of them changing are slim. Generally, people who are avoiding relationships, they believe that they have picked the wrong person rather than looking inside themselves to address their own fear and avoidance. So if you're really ready for an intimate and committed relationship, then trust yourself and don't just keep giving the benefit of the doubt. So that's what I wanted to share today regarding um, red flags and, and not ignoring them and regarding giving the benefit of the doubt. I hope this was helpful for you today. Please join me in my upcoming videos. Till next time, like this video, share it with someone you know it will help and browse the description box below for more information. Also, please leave your helpful comments. Thanks. Bye-bye.